Today's voiceover talent is more than just a pretty voice. Pretty voice. Pretty voice. Pretty voice. Today's voiceover talent has to be a boss. A boss. A boss. A boss. A boss. Join us each week for business owner strategies and success with your hosts, Ann Ganguza and Gabrielle Nistico, along with some of the strongest voices in our industry. Rock your business. Rock your business. Rock your business. Like a boss. Like a boss. Rock your business like a boss. Rock your business like a boss. A VO VO boss. boss. A VO boss. A VO boss. boss. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Anne, Anna, Anne Margaret, Anna Banana, Uh, (laughs) Annie, Annie's Fanny. Uh, (laughs) Oh, my word. Have you been Um, called all of these in your life? Yes, I have. Um, Ganguza, wow. Lucy, Miss Lucy. Miss Lucy had a steamboat. The steamboat had a bell. Oh, uh, my goodness. Wow. That's who I am with my amazing co-host, Gabby Gabrielle. Uh, go Gab, on, Gabby. Gab. Uh, gobs. Uh, <laughs> Gabba Gabba Hay. Gabber. Gabba Gabba Hay. Gabenstein. Gabberino. <laughs> uh, it's, there's, and... Every possible conceivable spelling of each one of those that you could think of. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, Gabby, what's in a name? We should talk about names and and maybe Uh, 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 names that maybe we're known by, a.k.a. aliases in voiceover. So so here's a, a handful of others. So also professionally. I'm known as both Gabby and Gabrielle, again, with multiple spellings. I am also Madison. Oh. Noel, Macy, and the other day I was Chloe. <laughs> I am multiple Anns, and I am also Amber. So, oh, yeah, nice you you. Did, yeah, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> yes, I'm also Amber. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at a script for Amber right now. So, <laughs> so how does this happen? Yeah, why do we have aliases, Gabby? What's your all reason? Right. <laughs> Lots of good reasons. First of all, many of mine are not self-imposed only two are uh Mm -hmm. the deal and actually really i guess only one is because one is my actual name so the deal with this is that there are a ton of voiceover companies be it talent agents casting companies production houses rosters of talent at large Mm -hmm. that understand that in today's digital age we are far too accessible and Anybody with access to the internet can find anyone pretty damn quickly. Yep. (laughs) So when we're invited or asked to come on to different voiceover rosters, we are required to use a specific alias Mm -hmm. for different rosters. And this way, the client can't hire you direct and cut out that middleman. Well, yeah. that's Thereby putting them out of business. Mm, Interesting. And then... uh Okay, so I wasn't thinking that that was the reason. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. One, that's oh, one big one. Yep, of course. All of these wacky names that I have to, on occasion, <laughs> answer to. <laughs> I will be in the studio. I'll be connected, IPDTL or Source Connect or, what, or even a phone patch. And the client is, like, saying a name, and I'm not <laughs> responding. And, like, the engineer will have to, like, come on. And, and I'm like, oh, right, me. Hi. Yes. <laughs> That's who I am. <laughs> so there's so there's a couple of different things. Then one would be your client doesn't want your name to be traced back to sure. an entity, right? Because they don't want to cut out the middleman. There's also the case where you, as the talent, may have multiple facets um, yes. and want to be on multiple rosters, but it's impossible for you to be just one person on that roster you might be multiple names on that roster or yeah you might want a different identity um for a specific specialty like to say that's audiobooks it. i'm going to say audiobooks because that's the one that comes to mind if you are someone who has different character performances yes. or you offer something or a handful of things that are very very uniquely marketable yes it's sometimes necessary to separate yourself into more than one person. Well, it because more than one market, right? Exactly. And the crossover of a market doesn't necessarily behoove you in any one genre or another, which is why I said genre for me. Uh, um, yeah. And yours might be character for you. But yeah, I, I, also have, I also have character as well. Yeah. So... 
And it's interesting because what it all comes down to is if we're trying to do our best to make sure that, again, the people we work with, the different representation we have, that everyone is doing their best to be able to sell and promote a service that we offer, if one of your services is kind of off in left field, then the easiest way to separate it and define it is sometimes with an alias. Mm Mm-hmm. There is one other reason that I have seen over the years as to why people might choose to do this, and it has to do with billing. Now, this isn't quite what I would say is above board, but it doesn't mean it doesn't go on. There are loads and loads and loads of voice actors out there who use different names, one with the union being their given name. (gasps) You are not saying that. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. And their alternate name being (laughs) the alias that they use for non-union work. Mm. And this has been going on for eons, just so everybody's clear on this. It's nothing new. I know so, so many voice actors who do this. And like I said, I'm I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. It's It's just done. It's it's done. done, And it's one of the reasons why you may encounter a voice actor who goes by multiple names. Mm -hmm. Sure. But there's so many reasons for aliases. There are. And and I don't want it to be like it's a secretive sort of like bad thing. Aliases aren't a bad thing. They don't have to be a bad thing. Like, I don't want to portray them as bad thing. I, I prefer not. them. I prefer them to be thought of as, you know, stage, stage aliases, stage right? Stage names, names right? For tools. different reasons, right? They're tools that can help us to, uh, to expand our business in multiple genres, in multiple areas, um, and in multiple, you know, in multiple cases where maybe the crossover of these particular names would not benefit the business. I got used to this process going all the way back to radio because mm. it wasn't even a choice. It was bestowed oh, yeah. upon you. Absolutely. I had program directors who had me uh, on multiple radio stations in a single cluster or corporate group. Mm-hmm. And in order to not have listenership that crossed sure. over, you were confused. Yeah, I, yep. they created a name for me. Sometimes I would even screw up because, you know, you have a moment where you forget which station you're at on what day and where and why. <laughs> <laughs> and you use the wrong name. Whoopsie. Well, you it know. happens. <laughs> and I think my uh, my niece, who was on a, uh, a roller derby team. Oh, uh, yeah. So a lot of times aliases can be something that gives you a character, defines you as a character, makes you easy to remember. I always loved her name as a roller derby. And she's she was pretty well known, too. But what her her name was Siri L. Killer. So her <laughs> name was Siri, C-I-R-I. And her, yes. And then L was her initial and then Killer. So that was her name. That's as, fantastic. Yeah, and she was amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so everybody knew her. And that's how she be- she had a bit of celebrity going on. Yeah. Well, so, and here, there's something I, I want to point out in this conversation. This is not restricted to actors and performing artists and voice actors. This right. actually happens in the corporate world quite a Absolutely. lot as well. So whether you know it or not, we are all very familiar with a corporation known as Yum. Mm-hmm. And the Yum brand or the Yum Corporation is made up of sub-brands yep. that most people see every single day. Mm. Taco Bell, yep. KFC, Pizza Hut, Wingstop, and I believe Long John Silver's is in there too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why not just call themselves Yum? Why not? Because each brand is marketing to a specific subset and has its individual distinct properties. Yeah, because I don't know about you, Anne, but I don't want to eat at the place that sells tacos and pizza and fried chicken and fish. (laughs) That sounds terrifying. It's a lot. And which one do they specialize in? I don't get it. (laughs) How does any of it connect? I want the one that that sells just pizza because they do it really well. Yeah, exactly. They and do it that really right well. there. Mm-hmm. The, because they do it really well. Yep, is what an alias should represent. If you're gonna use one, good analogy, if you're Gabby. Gonna do it. That's it, it's... Gabrielle. <laughs> Busty, bestie. It's making sure that there is a reason, right now. Mm-hmm. So when I remember very distinctly when you launched Automotive Annie. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I forgot that one. How do you forget that? (laughs) I remember a couple of people 
turning their nose up. I was like, man, that's freaking rude. Annie, nobody calls you Annie. It was, and I was like, hold on <laughs> a minute. it's funny because there's a lot of people that call me Annie. You just don't know about them. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. And then you were so you. You were so fabulously <laughs> eloquent. You just went, you know, there's a sort of playfulness that Annie brings to Absolutely. the automotive sector that Anne doesn't, doesn't quite represent. Oh, so true. So why wouldn't I let Annie lead in automotive? Boom! Yeah, I love it. Bam. <laughs> and it's catchy. <laughs> it sounds good. It's catchy. Rolls it's catchy. off the tongue. It's it rolls lovely. off the tongue. It totally gives it a flavor. It gives it a, a, a distinct difference, automotive Annie, than automotive yeah. Anne would. Right. Right. It's a, it, there is. There's a certain pizzazz that comes from mm-hmm. that. There's another, I guess, piece to this that's really important because while I, Anne and I both, and, and I think a lot of voice coaches and a lot of people throughout the voiceover industry now talk about market segmentation and how important it is to be Focus. brand specific, mm-hmm. be very well defined in what you targeted. do. Mm-hmm. Targeted. Yeah, all of that. People get freaked out. And we still have plenty of voice actors who go, but I do so many things. I don't want to limit myself. Well, okay. here's one way. <laughs> don't. <laughs> there you don't go. Don't limit yourself. But know that there might not be one of you. You might have to juggle five of you. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't have to be a name either, too, because now that you've, now that you've reminded me about, how can I forget about Automotive Annie? You know, <laughs> there's, know, it doesn't have to be a name, guys. It can, you know, I've also got other domains, too, like phone voice, medical narration. You know, those are also aliases for something that I do. They're that DBAs. You can, yeah, that you can absolutely use yourself to become found easier, yeah. right? A lot of it has to do for me with SEO uh, in terms of different genres, which is where I came from in the beginning of this episode was talking about genres. um, And you were talking more character specific. But yeah, mind genre, phone voice, medical narration, uh, automotive Annie, all of those for me are genre based. But then I have character based too. They all converge in different ways. They Mm -hmm. all have different applications. But really, you know, from the business standpoint, people, they hear alias and they think of something that's shady. Yeah. Where there's an irony to that. In the business world, it's simply called a DBA, doing yes, business absolutely. as. Absolutely. And I have multiple aliases, and I'm sure you do too, Gabby. As a matter of fact, yeah. we have production companies, right? So yeah. I have a DBA is, you know, Anne Speak. That was an older one from a long time ago. Anne Ginguza Voice Talent, Anne Ginguza Voice Productions. There's just, you know, different names that we're known by. Right. And no matter what you call me, no matter what alias, no matter what subsector of my voice career we're talking about, the checks are all cut to one place. (laughs) That is true. (laughs) There's one company at the end of the day that does all the billing and one entity that collects all of the receivables and payables. And that is Three Moon Media. That's Mm -hmm. my actual licensed business. Yes. That reports to the government. Yep. Well, and DBAs are nice because those are just, they're already aliases. So your yeah. checks can be written to any one of them. Right. And Pretty it much. works. Like Anne Ganguza is the same as Anne Ganguza Voice Talent, is the same as Anne Ganguza Voice Productions, is the same as Anne Speak. So checks can be written to any number of those names. And I, you, I, I'll give you guys my address too if you want to send me money right now. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Um, go ahead, cut that check right on out to Anne Ganguza, whatever. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Literally, you could write whatever. She'd add it as a DBA. It would be fine. There you go. (laughs) And that's all there is. You have to have the DBA registered. Now, I don't necessarily. So a lot of mine, the check literally just needs to be made out to my company name. But that's Mm -hmm. where all the invoices come from. So it's logical that people are going to follow that. Exactly. But there are so many reasons for this. And guys, authors do it. Authors do it for for a very similar reason. Oh, yeah. I mean, and there's... I love using uh, Stephen King as an example here. Everybody knows Stephen King. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows him for horror. But there's this guy named Richard Bachman. <laughs> and most people go, who the hell's that? Well, mm-hmm. that's also Stephen King. Yeah. It's a pen name that he writes other types of fiction under yep. that are less intense than the things he's known for. Yeah. Um, Stand By Me was originally written under that alias. 
There's so many wonderful opportunities to use an alias. Uh, audiobooks, lots of friends that I know, right, work in different segments of the audiobook oh, yeah. community, right, under different names, because maybe they're doing audiobook erotica, which, by the way, pays yeah. a whole heck of a lot of money um, if you're good at it. <laughs> and that may or may not be part of a brand that you want to associate Ooh. with your normal corporate narration, you know, yeah. voice. So there's some raunchier stuff out there that voice actors can definitely get concerned for that oh, doing yeah, it absolutely. under another name kind of buffers you yep. from mm-hmm. some of that because mm-hmm. you know that's not you, you don't want grandma to know about that that's not cool <laughs> or maybe she, i don't know i mean it depends I, I mean, maybe on, depends grandma's on your really relationship progressive. I there don't you know. go <laughs> my grandmother was very progressive wow right on. <laughs> she'd be like you go uh, yeah no mine would not that would not <laughs> so Interestingly so, enough, my mother would have something different to say about ah, it, but my grandmother, she was fairly progressive. Uh, and then the thing anyway. you have to realize, too, is the extent of the time or the energy or the effort that you dedicate into these altars, if you will, <laughs> is entirely up to you. I, I don't have social media for any of them. It stops at a website for, for the majority of them. Like, there's a website and that's it because they're not real. So to me, the idea of trying to make them real by giving them a profile on a social media well, site seems really strange. Gabby, in reality, the bosses, right? The old boss. Yeah. In yeah. in essence, Gabby and I are the bosses and we have a separate account social media True. to help promote that. So really, is it, you know, personality name or company name, aliases? They're both kind of the same thing. I think you really have to just figure out if it how will it how will this enhance your business by implementing an a company alias or a, a personal alias. And exactly. really important, you just have to understand from a business perspective, like you said, all of your monies come to one company name. Mm-hmm. Mine, because I have DBAs, can come to multiple different company names. Um, but it, it all works out in the wash because I'm the one person that has those aliases. Yeah. And anybody that has an alias probably has to have that in place. I will say that for any type of aliasing, business-wise, you do have to have a business um, in place uh, yes. to make it work because you have to be able to separate from another entity, right? From your business entity as well as maybe an alias entity because that just makes your accounting in the end a whole lot easier. Well, that and otherwise somebody is going to ask for a 1099 yeah. from a person who doesn't <laughs> yeah. exist. There you so go. There you that go. It doesn't work. Exactly. Yeah. So you guys have to have your back end in place in your business in terms of where, you know, how is that alias accounted for in your business? This whole process is one of, I think, the key differences between marketing and sales Mm. and how marketing allows us to propel and do different things with segments of the market Mm -hmm. in order to increase sales. Absolutely. And it is something that I think as more voice actors become aware of it and wise to it, they will find at some point they take advantage of it. Um, and guys, come on, it should come as no surprise. Um, most of the celebrities that you know by name are not oh, using their real name. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, Noel, it's been an amazing, amazing right? episode, right? Amber, so great. <laughs> oh, my God. Guys, don't, you know, don't think about aliases and how they can help you in your business and how you might use them effectively to be able to segment your genre and or uh, businesses to be able to get you more business. Let's talk about a couple of names that we love. Voiceovers.com is one, of course, the brand new player in the online casting world. Your voice, your way, effective, fair, transparent. We love those guys. <laughs> and whatever name you choose to put yourself under. <laughs> And, of course, the other voiceover name that we love and trust is IPDTL that allows Gabby and Noelle and Anne and Amber and the whole gang to come together. Or Ip Diddle, if you like. <laughs> yes, or Ip Diddle. Yes, or Kevin Leach to come together in in oneness um, to enhance our businesses. You two can <laughs> Ip Diddle like a boss at <laughs> IPDTL.com. We love you. Um, 
<laughs> so literally from all of us there you here go. at VO Boss, all <laughs> of us put together, uh, <laughs> have a great week and we'll see you next time. Awesome. Bye-bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your hosts, Ann Ganguza and Gabby Nistico. All rights reserved. Ann Ganguza voice talent in association with Three Moon Media. Redistribution with permission. Coast to coast connectivity via IPDTL. 